Rock. Hey, Rod, you on Wake Up Woodward? What up, though, brother? Welcome to the show. Hopefully, we got this thing figured out now. Third time's the charm. We got it this time. Let's rock. There we go. Let's rock. Hey, man, look in the crew. We're all ecstatic, man. Uh, Every time you drop knowledge. And so uh, let's jump right into it, man. We were talking about the Detroit Pistons. So let's kick things off with Rod's thoughts. Free agency is just something. I mean, the NFL can say that they have the best free agency. The NBA, absolutely. Even in a a year where it's not a great storyline for everything, but the NBA free agency is absolutely the best. You are sitting here wondering where PG is going. You want your team to go and make moves, and uh, you feel like you have a chance to make a splash in free agency. And, And during this high time of high media for the NBA and the Pistons even did that, too, getting their coach, getting um, Dennis Lindsay, making a couple of little smaller moves. But they got their, their time in the sun during the NBA's high season. Yeah, yeah. Hey, this NBA free agency is crazy. It's, it's amazing to see the, you know, uh, approaching billions of dollars worth of money spent uh, by some teams. Celtics. Uh, uh, you know what I mean? But yeah. it, it's, it's insane. It's absolutely insane to see. I, I'm just like, wait, I thought the CBA – we're supposed to be putting a cap on some of this stuff, but it seems like it's <laughs> yeah, helped cap. some of these top teams stay at the top. You know, be able to give them the longevity. Maybe I don't know. We'll see if that's a good thing or a bad thing for the NBA. I think uh, if the Pistons, with Trajan Langdon um, at the head of this pat, you know basketball operations for the Pistons now, I'm hoping that he better positions the Pistons to be able to you know get some draft capital. This has been a recurring theme, not just here on our show, but I'm sure across Pistons Nation. If Trajan Lane said he's out there to, you know, take on bad contracts to be able to take on future draft capital, I'm hoping he's one of those guys that's adept at being able to do that. We saw a little bit of that with the Tim Hardaway Jr. trade, three second round picks uh, coming to the Pistons. But um, what do you think so far? What's your assessment of Trajan Langdon and the moves that the Detroit Pistons have made to this point? Well, starting with Langdon, I think he is just honest and maybe a little bit too honest and straightforward <laughs> with uh, the way that he presents himself and, and what his plans are. And, and it's refreshing to see that a front office guy is going to tell you, hey, we're going. this is going to take time. This isn't going to be a throw it in the microwave or throw it in the air fryer and this thing is done in a couple of years. It's going to take time. We've got to get some talent on this roster, and we've got to all be aligned in the organization to be able to do that. And to go get Dennis Lindsay says they're serious about this. This isn't a uh, we're just going to figure it out as we go. No, they have a plan of what they want to do. Um, and and then just on the um, path forward, I think it's it's going to be some roster turnover, and it may be some of the young guys that um, we thought were untouchables before. And I think we've said Cade is only real untouchable, but uh, uh, sorry, people didn't think that he might be an, a, a piece to move or Jaden Ivey or maybe even Jalen Duran. All of those guys might be people that you say, in order to move forward, you might have to, to change and, and get rid of a piece that you thought you were going to keep. And I think that's all on the table for him because he understands the situation that this team is in. Yes, I'm, I'm glad that you mentioned that because I was just about to ask you if this team, if this organization seems to have more of a direction than they did in those years with a Troy Weaver. And you kind of said as much that that you do see a direction. And kind of to piggyback off of that point with some of the players that they've acquired, Tim Hardaway Jr. and uh, mm-hmm. Tobias Harris, how much do you think those players will help a Cade Cunningham next year, if at all? I think they can. And I think the commitment to Tobias Harris says how, how valuable that is to them. That 26 mil is no just drop in the bucket. Um, and Tobias Harris is not a an all-star type that we were talking about. They need to go out and get. But they think that experience is that critical. And to go and get Tim Hardaway, who is just a, a professional scorer, um, and not a, a top-tier professional scorer, but he can go get you 15 if you need it per night. And to bring on that contract, that's a $16 million uh, contract that's expiring um, next year. That's a strategic move. So I think they they saw the value in the vets and bringing those in, um, and and the price tag is a little bit higher than you might have wanted, 
and they didn't go get the elite level guy, but they see this is going to be incremental. And again, this is not a, a one or two year turnaround. And you saw that in both of those deals too. Tobias only two years, Tim Hardaway uh, only for next year uh, guaranteed. So you're, you're saying these are bridge guys. These are going to start us on the path that we need to get. And, and both of those are good locker room guys. Tobias is one of the most professional guys that I've dealt with in a Pistons locker room um, in terms of just kind of settling. You see the type of person and player that they want in that locker room too uh, and on the court just kind of a go after it guy I think both of those fit the mold and show you the direction that they want to go so so Rod, is it kind of fair to say Tobias Harris Tim Hardaway Jr. they're like the Mark Canna the Gio Urshela acquisitions for the Tigers like the let's, Pistons let's they better really that. starting to contend is going to be two years maybe three down the line so these are the type of pros that you want to come in to help teach them how to win to help to help help he teach them how to become professionals. They're, they're such a young team. Um, what you're saying is getting me more excited about, regardless of the fit, those types of veterans, why they were brought into this Pistons team. Right. I, I think it's exactly that. And it's not a, a five-year deal where you right. say this is going to be a centerpiece. This is a Pudge Rodriguez when we just didn't have anybody else. This is more, these are stabilizing pieces. These are teaching Cade how to be a profession. And, and not that he needs to learn how to be, but this is helping some of those younger guys and taking some of that pressure off Cade to be the one who stands up in the locker room and says something. These are vets who can come in and say, hey, I've been in the league 10 years. This is what I've seen in the times that I've been around. Uh, Tim Hardaway Jr. went to the NBA Finals this year. You can't take that away from him. That, that, that experience is going to be so valuable in being around other guys. He's been a starting level guy on, on, on the Knicks. He's been on uh, Atlanta. He's been on really good teams. Um, so I think that's going to help. Even having that experience and having that on the court in small little spurts is going to help them. Hey, Rod, and uh, one thing that we know Trajan wants to do, he said he wants to take on bad contracts, maybe through the trade market. And when you look around, there's not many of those type of players left. Um, of course, the big one, Zach Levine, still out there, still available. Do you think the Pistons are in play uh, for Zach Levine or maybe even Lonzo Ball or somebody of that caliber to maybe they can trade and, and get draft capital back? Please. <laughs> Not, I wouldn't say Zach Levine where they're bringing in Zach Levine. Maybe they absorb some of that money, but they use the big piece of that on Tobias Harris. So they, they were in the $40 million range. I can say, yeah, maybe they, they could pull some strings and make that happen. I think they're just going to nip and tuck a little bit at the roster with the remaining space that they have. But uh, a Zach Levine, at first, I thought might have been an option. But the, the indications that I'm getting and the things that I'm hearing are just saying that's just the value isn't there for them and, and the risk – in terms of his injury history and everything else for that price tag, you're talking 40 plus mil and you got a couple years left on that deal. Uh, they're just not going to be that aggressive and that reckless in trying to go after something. And again, I think that says something about this. Um, the way that they're approaching this is this is not a quick fix deal. This is going to be something that they'll be patient with. Yeah. It's what Trajan Lane spoke to it. Whether we agree with it or not, being able to report on what the organization is saying, uh, especially now from the mouth of the president of basketball operations, which will be the CEO of the singular kind of voice of everything this team is going to do. Uh, they are like you stated in your, in your thoughts, you know, these guys are being true and honest and open and transparent and they're doing exactly what they stated. Uh, and, and that's one of the things that we pondered uh, at the start of this thing. Was this going to be something where we see kind of quick change and they're, they're worried more about kind of where the fans and the supporters are, or is this Trajan Landon in his front office Coming into this situation, not having skipping any steps and saying we'd rather do this thing the right way for the health of the organization, for the long-term success of this team, and honestly to put these young players in their best possible position to succeed. And I think that's what we're seeing. So whether we like it or not, it's something we have to talk about because it's what they're doing. And I'm, I'm, you know what, whether I think they should go out there and take a swing on one of these kind of, you know, high-risk, high-reward type players like a Zach Levine or even a DeMar DeRozan, it's nice to know that this organization, you know, is able to kind of make those assessments. You know, some of the things that you spoke to as it related to why they're probably out on Zach Levine. But they do have $24 million in cap space left over. They do have a couple of their exceptions as well. Uh, what do you think this team has left to them? I was hoping they would go and uh, kind of attack that backup center position with someone who could rim protect a little bit. But I just don't know what's out there. We discussed a little bit of JaVale McGee. 
Uh, but, uh, you know, is there anything on your radar as it relates to the 24 million plus exceptions that the Pistons have? I know Gary Trent Jr. was another popular name that they stated could be had for one of the exceptions that the Pistons uh, currently hold. Yeah, I think you can look at the exception uh, and say maybe there's something there with eight. You're going to do Fontecchio's deal uh, when you're done with everything else. Uh, I think you can look at backup point guard as another one of those areas that they would address. Backup point guard, backup center, and and see what's left after that. I know there's some people out there who who would say Luke Kennard, bring the, a good shooter back, um, or Sadiq Bay. It's just, it's just a Pistons reunion and a Pistons <laughs> reunion of, of what people want to see. Um, but I think those are those are the right. I wouldn't hate, and, and this isn't possible, but Reggie Jackson, if he just got traded to, if they went back after Reggie Jackson, because I think he's at a place in his career where he could help them. That's the type, and not specifically Reggie, but that's the type of player <laughs> that they would need. Yeah, no, I wouldn't hate it. I wouldn't hate it. But, yeah, uh, ooh, man. I, I'm good on that. All retread. <laughs> yeah, this retread thing is, is getting a little out of hand, man. No, Talk but, to me, KG. But, uh, Rod, I wanted to ask you about new head coach J.B. Bickerstaff. So, you know, just like the free agent market, the coaching candidates were kind of drying up as well. But they land on J.B. Bickerstaff, who is accustomed to coming in in bad situations. He came in behind the Kevin McHale firing, the David uh, Fisdale firing, and then – he had three years in Cleveland where he proved that he can develop young talent and, you know, uh, achieve a level of success uh, with young players. Now, he hasn't got to the greater heights, but do you look at J.B. Bickerstaff as maybe just like a short-term solution to get the Pistons to where they need to be? Or can he be a coach that's here for the long term and, you know, that can take over the job going forward? I think it aligns with everything else that we said is that if you've got players for the next couple of years, JB at worst can get you through the next couple of years. He may turn into the guy who, who becomes that transitional guy and get you to the playoffs. Um, and, and, and you see where you go after that. But with the roster that he had in Cleveland, with the injuries that they had in the playoffs, I don't know why expectations were so high for them this year. And getting to the second round was such a bad thing. Maybe Cleveland thinks they're a little bit better than they are. Yeah. And that could be to the Pistons' Toilet. benefit, that they, they, they missed out on a, a guy that, that could have done them a little bit more good. Yeah, and I want to piggyback off of uh, the J.B. Bickers, Bick, Bicker staff uh, conversation. So based off of what we know about him, and I'm going to exclude Cade Cunningham from this discussion because he's uh, he's our guy. He's 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 the known. Which other core drafted member of the Detroit Pistons do you think will benefit the most from having J.B. Bickerstaff as their head coach? I think all of them. I think every single one of them. Let's I think go. you'll see Asar. You'll see Ron Let's Holland. You'll see Jaden Ivey kind of benefit from uh, a guy. And, and he's had the same sort of resume in terms of player development and and instilling confidence in young guys the issue i thought with this roster and, and you talked about it earlier when you were saying casey came in and uh, monty came in is these are guys who are sort of ready to go and might be that that third step guy instead of the first step guy and that's sort of what troy weaver wanted last year before monty was bring just give me a, a young assistant that we can grow this roster together. And when they brought in Monty, the clock started ticking. Like, no, we, we want you to be a playoff team or a play-in team this year. And that's just fool's gold. You can't do that with this roster that they had. And we saw that throughout the season. And I think we said it at the beginning of the year is that the, the ceiling for this team is maybe play-in, but you can't have ceiling immediately uh, the way that they were looking for that. Um, so I think with, with JB, it's just going to be get to a certain level. And everybody wants to put a win total on this. For me, you get to 28 wins this year, and you've done something. You've changed the culture that we're not a team that, that wins in the teens, 17, 14. We're into the 20s. And you, if you get to 30 this year, you, you've, you've finished the assignment. You did exactly what you were supposed to do. And again, in year two after that, then you can start looking, hey, maybe we can get to 36 and try to threaten for a play-in. Something like that, I think, is the, the trajectory that this roster is on right now. Yeah, yeah, and I'm glad you actually uh, kind of went there, uh, this kind of last comment or statement, because I know you got to go soon. It's just surrounding the fact that this team, in totality, no matter if they've done what we wanted them to do or not, it is a better team right now. Ron Holland, uh, and just kind of looking at his footage, the only thing that a lot of us kind of like, you know, man, this has to improve. Is this shooting? And he's saying the same thing as well in the Pistons. They believe that they are set up to help him. 
when you when you you, you kind of look at the other additions with uh, Tobias Harris, Tim Hardaway Jr., uh, JB Bickerstaff. Uh, the thing that I like about those three, as well as what Ron Holland is already showing, is that those guys all want to be here. And in the past, maybe we would have misunderstood or de- mis you know defined it the wrong way. But after going through what we kind of went through with Monty Williams, who I think he's a good guy, but his heart and his mind probably was not all the way into this job. We saw that effect. To have guys like that and free agents that want to actually be here in a coach, I think speaks volumes. And I don't know. I, I'm waiting to see what type of effect that actually has. When your coach is walking into that gym, you know that guys like Jaden Ivey are going to be put in their best possible position to succeed. I, 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 I see why they say, you know what, maybe let's take – a second to just assess things uh, with this young roster. Let's make sure we get them the right types of vets who will be available. But overall, I agree with your overall assessment, Rod. This is going to be a better team next year. I believe a team that we look at them and we say, you know what, it's night and day, even if the wins aren't necessarily there. Right. And one more piece about Ron Holland and and getting these new free agents in. It suggests that you don't have to have Ron Holland come in and start immediately or even play significant minutes immediately Mm -hmm. because you have depth at those positions. Now you brought in vets who can chew up some of those minutes. And you mentioned the availability of Tobias Harris and Tim Hardaway Jr. They're not going to be hurting on the bench and sulking in in street clothes. These are guys who are going to play, and they're at positions where you have young guys who need to learn. Let them learn with a smaller number of minutes instead of having to come in and play big chunks immediately. Yeah, yeah, I think that's the word. That's the word, man. So, Rod, as always, brother, thank you for your time. Gonna let you go. I appreciate you, man, for uh, for still saying the word, man. We jump on with the Rachel Wood crew. As always, you drop in the heat. Thank you, brother. Thank you for uh, answering all the questions. I know the fellas they definitely appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, yeah, Rod. Thank you, Rod. Thanks for that. All, all right, guys. We'll see you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, and uh, I know we gotta get into this next segment because I am really, really, really eager. You've been teasing this thing all show, so I'm amped to be able to see. What flannel Sam has up his flannel sleeves <laughs> for the a, Detroit Tigers? It's maybe not what you want to hear, but it's what you need to hear. Uh oh. Uh oh. Kick Stay the dog, pet in. the dog, right? I mean, that's Stay real truth right there. You know what, man? I'm just going to throw the phone number out there. Something tells me some people may want to say something with their chest after hearing this. 313 552 6322. Once again, that phone number 313 552 6322. Once again, shout out to the legend, Detroit News Rod Beard, for the Woodward Pistons segment. Hey, brings the heat all the time. But thank you guys for always choosing to stay tapped in with the Wake Up Woodward show and Woodward Sports Monday. Monday.